What up guys? This is the day that everybody has been waiting for for the last couple of months. It's time to get lucky or cry. Actually, let me move myself a little bit. But yeah, today we finally have the two gags primals. Everybody is super excited. I'm super excited. Some people are gonna get insanely lucky. Some people are gonna get disappointed. I haven't bought any primal shards up to this point. But I'm kind of, you know, bracing myself that I might do it because, you know, one or two good primals would really go a long way. And there's this one guy in my clan who had like a, a massive account, like chains, that he, he pulled a couple really good primals and suddenly he's, you know, pushing to top 50 and he's breezing through the top 100 in Live Arena and so on. And he was saying that I should. I should buy primal shards because if the same thing happened to me I would also do way better and I think that's how Plarium intends it to be, that's how many people feel like and some people get lucky, some people don't. Last time I pulled a really good champion that was meta, was like Necret and that was like you know four years ago, that's pretty much the only like really meta champion that I ever pulled. I pulled him you know two times more after that, but as as far as meta champions go, half of the mythic champions are super meta. If you pull anything like Siegfried, Lazarus, Grixia, Galatir, Nice, many of the other ones, it, it's totally gonna change your account. And even that those like, let's say mid-tier mythical champions, even those are account changing, like they are still way better than the rest in PvP. I think a good example is um, Komidus, for example, that he's not really considered one of the best, but if you pull a Komidus, it's gonna be an insane boost for your live arena. So pretty much anything is impactful. So let's get into it and see, see how we go. Good luck for everybody that is gonna pull today. And I'm probably gonna buy some shards. I'm just Bracing myself for it. I didn't buy any yet, but I think I will buy them in a second. But okay, let's pull pull out the painful plaster and then get get into it. Also, I'm gonna talk a little bit about mode after the, um, the pulls. Like I mentioned before, I was really wishing to get mode. I finally have mode. I think she's super good. I'm kind of you know waiting for stone skin accessories and some split souls for her. But let's talk about it after the pulls. See, Plarium... Oh no, okay, these are not those. These are other shards, okay. Anyway, come on. Let's see double double music. Why not? If I were to say what I really... I don't want to pull because I'm like praising myself to get disappointed, so I'm super afraid to pull. But if I were to pick like two champions, give me like Galatir or Grixia and one good nuke or like... I don't know, Galatir and Nice, and that would be that would be the best day ever. Let's see that happening. Okay, let's go. Come on, Plarium. I, I still haven't pulled any mythic champions, and I haven't kept track of the PT counter, but we're definitely, I feel like, getting there. I think, at, I'm sure I'm gonna pull the PT. So, oh, this, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> of course it had to be, you know. Ah. Uh, I want to say that I knew that happened, that's gonna happen, and I've said many times it's gonna happen, you know. Aphidus is very famously considered the best mythic champion in existence, so that's where we're at. <laughs> Dude, I don't even have like a massive disappointed reaction because I was honestly expecting Aphidus. I knew it had to go this way. Barrio was never giving me any break with the Shard RNG. I, I played this game for five years, I've never had anything good. Like I said, the only good thing that I ever pulled that was actually meta champion was Necret. Only one champion in five years, and that's like four years ago, so... Okay, maybe we get lucky and we, we get the second mythical one. Come on. And if I buy shards, I'm sure we're not gonna get anything out of them, but I guess we'll do it. You know, I really want to get the mythic champion very badly, and you know, Aphidius doesn't really count, so here we go. The, these were my free-to-play shards, you know, haven't 
these are not bots, so there's not that many of them. You you get them pretty sparsely, and I guess Plarion probably intended for you to get like two champions, uh, not two champions, one per, one champion per year if you're a super end game, kind of like with boys, I guess. Mm, but okay, very disappointing. <laughs> I was so I was so ready for that though. <sighs> Why? Dude, why it had to be Aphidius? Why couldn't it be like Galatir or something? Something else. Now if I buy shards and don't get anything, I'm gonna feel so dumb and like a sucker and idiot. And you know, <laughs> it's not gonna be a fun day, but okay, I'll do it. I'll buy shards and you know, if I don't get if I don't get something half decent, I'm I'm never gonna buy mythic shards again, but okay, give me a sec, I'm gonna buy some shards and then we'll continue. Okay, we're back, so I was a sucker, I bought... Wait, can, can my clan may see what I pulled? I don't think they can see the pool. Anyway, I was a sucker, I bought shards, like I said, I, I vowed to myself that this is the... The only time I'm ever gonna buy mythic shards if I don't... I mean, uh, yeah, mythic shards if I don't get a good champion from it, so Plarium got me, we bought, we bought shards, they made tons of money, and here we go. This is the, the, the first and last time for me, though. <laughs> this is my limit. I feel so, so painful looking at the shard prices. Oh, oh okay, they get legendary. Okay, who cares? Yeah. Dude, you pay so much money. <laughs> And you're not even guaranteed to get one champion. Like, it could still be a terrible one, but it's like not even remotely likely that we're gonna we're gonna actually get a champion. Oh, okay. Need to make some inventory space. But yeah, the <laughs> I, I guess I guess um here you go. I mean this is the experience. I know many people have way better experience and they always tell it to me and I wish I I had it, but everybody can't get lucky, so this is gonna happen to a lot of other people than just me, that your first champion is gonna be Aphidius and your second is probably gonna be something else terrible, so Okay. Maybe maybe we get a comeback Comeback surprise and one good champ. Oh, we got a second one. Okay, Galleus. Okay, I can't complain about that. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, he's not quite, you know, the cream of the crop, but he's definitely more, more usable than um, Aphidius. So I, I guess I'll take that. Honestly, I was not, <laughs> I was not expecting it to get any any champions at this point. I was expecting that. The next mythical is gonna be like in a year or something like that. But okay, we got the rooster. He's not like meta, but he's usable. I have faced him a few times. Like you know, obviously both of these were like you know maybe below average, but but the rooster is like pretty good actually. Okay, let's take a look at their skills. Can you just show mythic champions? Is there even oh there is an option like that? Okay. Okay, so let, let's... I always call him Rooster. I guess it's... Galleus Bloodcrest. I wasn't really that familiar with his name. Wait, so... First, okay, both forms is defense. I do have some great defense scaling gear, so I can put that on him. Th that's kind of good. I would honestly wanted to get... If we talk about Mooker, I would have wanted to get Nice, since he's an HP scaling champion. But... Defense scaling is pretty good. I'll, I'll take that too. Not even because it makes you a lot more tanky, but because you can diversify your gear and make most out of it. If you have like, you know, 15 attack scaling nukers and you don't have any HP or defense scaling nukers, you're kind of gonna waste some of your best gear. So it's nice to find a way to use it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the skills. Like I said, He's kind of one of the newer ones, not super new, but kind of new. I think he's only like maybe a couple months old at this point. But the thing is that if one champion is like super strong, you're gonna see many of them on the first week of like Classic Arena Reset and Live Arena. 
and I have definitely never seen this champion in Classic Arena. I have seen him a couple times in Live Arena, but we know he's not meta, and <laughs> we know Aphidius is literally the worst mythical champion in the game, and even if he was good, he's, I guess, like a PvE champion, so he's not really even intended to be used for PvP. Galveus is kind of, you know, getting there. Let's actually... I need to pull up the... Ayumi love as well, because, you know, Ray doesn't want to show the multipliers in the game for some godforsaken reason that is not relevant. What? They don't have the multipliers in Ayumi love. Ah, come on. It's not that new anymore. Hmm. Does Hell Hades website have it? N not, not, not trying to, you know, bash on the website, but I've always preferred the Ayumi Love one because I think the UI for looking champions is better and I need to scroll like, you know, half screen down to see it, but okay, here we have the multipliers. So A1, 3.6 multiplier, that's kind of high for A1 actually. Attacks one enemy, places an extra hit on all enemies under decreased defense debuffs. So I guess if they have decreased defense, that's gonna hit super hard for A1, but decreased defense and defense is very impactful in PvP. And so far, after we, you know, after we, go, before we got Polymorph, every champion or every Classic Arena team ever used like a buff strip. And usually they also had decreased defense, but at least they had a buff strip. And after Polymorph, those basically have not been used. Now with the pinpoint set, people might try to bring, bring some of those old Madame series strategies back and other ones. So maybe it's conceivable to sometimes use decreased defense, but at least for now it's not, it's never used. It's not even like off meta, but it's just a never used thing in, in practice. Then the A2 attacks all enemies before attacking, places decreased defense for two turns, damage increases by 10% for each enemy under a decreased defense debuff. Now, the issue is that he's a nuker. I don't know if we really want to build him in like a pinpoint set and it's not permanent in the first place so you know usually you don't really build nukers like that for pvp <laughs> you want them to do damage and not debuffs generally but okay 3.9 multiplier on this skill slightly more than the a1 and i guess with you know with decreased defense and with the increased damage per debuff I think this skill is gonna hit very hard, but I think the interesting part is the tankiness. I don't think he's that tanky, but we can definitely kill people with this skill. Though the decreased defense, for me, in practice, it's not gonna be proking very often because they're always gonna go first and have like a Sifi. So it's very uncommon that I could land any debuffs, unless you have like Galatir or Crixia or some champions that does buff strip and then debuff on the same one or the same skill a3 attacks all enemies damage increases by 15 percent for each buff on each target all of his skills have like conditional effects that increase the damage decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns the, the issue with this one is that um since it doesn't say that it first decreases the duration of their buffs I think that's gonna happen after the skill, which makes makes this like way less useful. If it was before the damage, it would be kind of good actually. And this has a multiplier. Wait, oh, I was looking at the wrong form, was I? Yeah, I was looking at the wrong form of the multipliers. Never mind, my bad. So the first skill had four multiplier, second had 4.2. Th these are actually kind of high. And this one has 4.4 and then you get the additional damage for um, each buff on each target. I guess it's gonna hit hard. I it's not gonna be, you know, charge hit damage, but I don't see how this would be like a terrible skill. Yeah, I, I think this will hit just fine. And what's the passive? 
enemies under decreased defense debuff cannot play stun basically any CC. Not relevant in PvP. You're not gonna land the decreased defense anyway. He should have a passive that he can be polymorph when he places decreased defense. Then we will be talking about something. Resets the cooldown of Sundered Sky skill if an enemy under decreased defense debuff is killed by that skill. Which one is it? Oh, it's the A2. Okay. So, kind of like Quintus and Xena and multiple champions reset their nukes if they get kills. Also resets the cooldown of Sonic Torture is kill if an enemy under decreased debuff is killed by that skill. Also, oh, it's the same effect for both of those skills. It's a bit weirdly worded. Why do you have two separate like lines for this? You could just have one line and then put both of these two skills on it. Or just say that resets all skills. You could even do that, but okay. That was a bit more complicated than it had to be. Let's go back to the first form. <laughs> I was I was checking the second one first. The, the second one looks cooler, I guess, so we went with that one. At least we can try to come up with some battles where we can use him against, like when he's getting locked out. But, um... Wait, do I have a stone skin on? I feel like I don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it because I checked it for Marius. It's, it's the same faction, so yeah, I, I can't do 4P stone skin on, on him. And obviously, you know, I have Chaos Sword every piece I got, so... Uh, yeah, this doesn't have defense at all. Okay, let's take a look at the first form. Attacks one enemy, places 30% decreased speed, debuff for two turns. When counter-attacking, the damage inflicted by this skill is based on this champion's defense and enemy max HP. That sounds like a PvE ability. Uh, we can see the enemy max HP multiplier on the... Oh, okay, there you go. Never mind. No, it doesn't, it doesn't show the multiplier on Hellhades website. I'm gonna assume it's like 0.1 multiplier for enemy max HP, but it doesn't state it there. That, that's the default one that many skills have. It could be up to 0.2, but obviously either one doesn't matter at all in PvP, because people are not gonna have like 20 million health, so... Okay, 8. 2 is a 3.9 multiplier, attacks all enemies, places provoke debuff for one turn, if the target is plus, places a provoke debuff for two turns instead, also places an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn and counter attack for two turns. Again, it's a PvE skill, I don't really know, know what I should say about this, you know. I always get it mixed up a little bit between provoke and taunt, but Provoke is definitely the the worst one out of those two, so Taunt would be maybe a little bit interesting, but as a nuker, when he's not tanky and he's not putting out unkillable, I don't think that would do, do him good anyway. But yeah, I don't think you really want to use this skill in PvP at all. Well, I mean, you want to use it for the damage, but it's not like you're not really using it for the Provoke. Anyway, it's still, you know, counter attack and damage, so of course you're gonna use it. Fully restores all allies destroyed max HP. Also places revive on death and increase defense buff on all allies for two turns. I like this skill, and I guess it works out for PvE, but for PvP, this would have to either um, give him extra turn, or also do damage on the skill, but you don't want to waste a turn on Nougar to, like, give buffs on your team, that, that's not useful. He's gonna die before he gets gets another turn. And then passive reflects 50% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker. If the attacker is boss, reflects 100% of the damage this champion receives and also heals this champion by 50% of the damage received. Yeah, it's a, you know, 
I knew it. He's a PV champion. I've seen him a couple times in PvP. I definitely use him since he can change the other form and he's not fully locked out. But he he basically doesn't do defense buff on him. Like he does it on the first form, but he doesn't get extra turns, so it it sucks. And he doesn't do it on the second turn, second form, and he's not tanky. He doesn't provide some kind of insane utility for PvP, so he's kind of mediocre. And <laughs> he's the much better one out of these two. And both of these are basically PvP champions. Let's let's put it that way. I mean, I'm here complaining, but I got like two mythic champions from 50 shards, so, so I'm I'm sure somebody's gonna bring that up, but. If, if, if I get 10 mythic champions from 50 shards and all of them suck and are not relevant for PvP, it doesn't really do me any good. So I'm still a little bit sad and saddened by this. Okay, let's not prolong this video too much. I was gonna talk about mod. I guess we'll talk about it on the other video, but let's quickly take a look at our video skills too. So A1 gives him well. Oh no, ally with highest attack. Oh no, his defense. I've oh his defense on second form. I felt like both of these were defense scaling champions, but I totally forgot that Avidius has for first form that scales with attack. Or let me double check because okay, it's just from <laughs> just from attack on um nice abilities. I think was it on the second or first form. One of the forms he scales both from attack and HP, but it doesn't mention it. But he actually scales like totally fine from both of them. But he scales on one form with attack and one form in defense. So you can already see that he's kind of intended to be like a utility champion and not like a pure damage dealer. Okay, so A1. Wait, this is the wrong form. A1, Whale, single target. A2, attacks all enemies. 50% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns. Then increases the duration of all enemy debuffs by the one turn. Yeah, th this is, you know, this is very PvE. I'm sure he's actually pretty good for PvE, probably like Hydra or something. A3, attacks all enemies. Instantly activates any HP burn debuff on each enemy. If an enemy is not under HP burn, then places it for two turns. Pretty good for for Hydra. Each time this champion champion places a HP burn debuff, decreases the target's defense by three percent, up to thirty. And for each HP burn debuff on the enemy team, you get ten percent more crit damage. Whenever an enemy HP burn debuff activates, increases this champion's attack by 50. Okay, so he gets a lot of buffs from those. I'm sure he scales pretty well from the burns and the raw damage. And even though the first form is the attack scaling one and the second one is the defense one, but I guess if you have the first form just for the burn utility and then you build as a defense scaling nuker, is that how he's meant to be? A1 attacks one enemy, places 50% increase accuracy buff on ally with lowest accuracy. Seems kind of not relevant. Attacks all enemies, places stun debuff on them for one turn. Places two continuous heal buffs on all allies for two turns. If no stuns were placed by this skill, so this is like the normal version and then what you do on Hydra or bosses. And him doing burns and heals doesn't sound bad and provoke doesn't he does provoke on no the rooster was doing provoke okay so on the second form he does provoke places provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn also places 25 percent strength and and increase defense on all allies for the two turns no the strength is only for him okay that was a bit confusing when attacked, has 100% chance of placing weak and debuff, and 35% chance of stun for one turn. Increases this champion's defense by 1 point for every 2 points of attack when in their alternate form. What? But 
this is the form where he scales from defense, right? I'm so confused. He doesn't scale from defense on the other form. So he's gonna be tanky on the other form if you build him as a defense scaling champion, but he's not gonna do any damage. No, no, okay. Yeah, I'm confused by the wording. I guess it applies to this form. The, this form, I guess, is the alternate form, yeah. <laughs> that, that was my foreigner instincts kicking in. I guess they must mean that this is the alternate form, of course. I'm not, you know, super experienced with the wording because I haven't really been playing with these champions that much. But okay, that makes sense. So you can build him with attack and then he, I'm sure he's very good for Hydra. And I guess I basically, basically pulled myself a two Hydra champions, so... It's a bummer, it sucks. I'm gonna... Go cry myself to sleep after this video or weep about it. I don't think I'm gonna be... Gonna be buying Primal Shards again, they are so expensive. The chances to get something is so good, uh, it's so terrible. And even, even when we got two champions out of 50 shards, which is way more than we get, and we might n not get any champions in 200. But both of them suck, and then we might also just not get any champions, so... I already kind of lost my... <laughs> lost my, um... What's the word? I don't have high hopes for it, let's, let's put it that way. I, I don't think a good... Good Mythic Nuker pull is ever gonna happen on my account, so it is what it is. Anyway, I I hope you get better luck than me, even though I wish I I pulled it off this time, but yeah, good luck with your pulls and see ya.